welcome to Friday Facts number 406 with Space Age Music, and I have my Space Age composer. Hey, no, Mojo. Hello. Um, you're great at... Do you know what? Yep. Do you know what? I completely forgot to look at what the 406 was. Uh, oh, the HTML error codes. Uh, I, yeah, I, it doesn't matter. It's forever now. doesn't matter. Yep, yep. Yep. Uh, well, well, uh, today we're talking about music and we're going to talk about how you compose blueprints. That's about as far as your composition yes. goes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. They're, they're one and the same music and blueprints. Yeah, it, it, they're both it's written on paper. Yep. Yep. yep Let's yep. go with that. Okay. So in November 21, they started a conversation with Peter was oh, yeah. Very talented Czech music composer to create the soundtrack for Factory Expansion. Since then, we've been working together on the soundtrack for Factory Space Age, conceptualizing and finding solutions to a not so small amount of problems. And filling expansion with quality music specially designed for the best possible Factory experience. Peter is a very special musician because, besides from proving master of electronic music, his education experience in uh, the concert, oh, I've forgotten it already, uh, conservatory makes him uh, capable of composing music using a full range of classical orchestra. So he's a little bit of a unique duck. Yeah. Yeah. Because not many people have an overlap between classical orchestra and electronic. Yeah. It's a bit of an odd mix. Yeah. Uh, so they're going for a full orchestra music, which is different. Also going to add electronics, which I don't think the original soundtrack really had any electronic, electronic music. Yeah. Uh, no. And they're also doing a real orchestra in a real studio. Yeah. The difference is, you know, between... It's not a... something you see very often these days. Well... Uh... Uh, they least, do, it's not something you hear about as often. Well, they do have a point. The difference, as you know, between a synthetic orchestra and a real one can be huge. It, it can be. I don't disagree. Okay. Um, like I, I liken it back to the soundtracks for like some some RTSs over the years, like Supreme Commander, Total Annihilation. These all have real orchestra music, which two things. One sounds awesome, and two is tied into what's happening in the game. So if you're, you know, out at map view and just scrolling around having a great old time, then, you know, it's some piece of classical, relaxing, thinking music. But then when you're in the heart of the battle, they'll do a transition into battle music. And um, Factorio doesn't have that option. So I don't know if an orchestra style music, especially with a real orchestra, is going to fit. But we have some samples, so we'll get to some samples shortly. Um... So recording, I mean, yep. The, the counterpoint there is that it is good atmosphere because the original soundtrack was very atmospheric. It, I mean, it, it sort of blended into the game very well. It wasn't too repetitive. Well, no, it's, it, it's not. I, I still play the game with the soundtrack running, which means I'm up to, let's not count how many hours worth of, yeah, listening to that soundtrack over and over, which is only like an hour and a half long. I should it's mention. It's very long. It is an hour and a half, roughly long. So, um, which is actually for a game very long as far as soundtracks are concerned. Yeah, I think Captain Ministry with the newest soundtrack that they added came up to an hour and a half. Um, Dyson Sphere is about an hour and a half now and they've added to the soundtrack three times. Satisfactory, I have no idea actually. They've only just published the soundtrack and I haven't bought it yet. So I don't know how long the Satisfactory soundtrack is. Anyway, totally on point. Okay. So, recording music with additional orchestra is a big challenge, requires a long process and a really complex coordination. From music directing and composing to orchestration, coordination of all the musicians, arrangements, recording, post-production, etc. In the case of soundtracks, 174 professionals are involved, without counting the Factorio team. By the way, this is written by Albert, who's in charge of their music since square one from memory. Sound. Yep. Yeah, Sound. Pretty much. Sound. Yeah, I don't think he does music. I don't think he does sound. And then he's been has somebody else doing a lot of the sound effects now. The guy who had a, a kind of sound. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But they had somebody else come in that did the artillery sounds. They forgot to add to the game for a year and a half. So maybe they forget to add to the soundtrack to the game for a year and a half. Okay, recording sessions of the soundtrack have been held since November twenty three. In uh, the yep, 
yep, studios in Prague. Uh, and then we have some pictures. Now, there are very important things. They have an on-air picture. Now, I should mention, as somebody who's actually looked into getting a sign that lights up bright red that doesn't say on air but says recording that I can put on the outside of my studio. It actually is very expensive to get a sign that says any, or it's considerably more expensive to get a sign that says anything other than on air. But they're recording. They're not on air. They're not actually broadcasting any of this, but on air is the cheap, cheap one. You get a custom sign of whatever you want, but you're paying custom prices. Uh, on airs are made fairly regularly. Seems like radio or, stations use or them. A, or you get a laser cutter. You know, you spend $1,000 on a laser cutter, and then you can make any sign you want. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> okay, uh, so the second picture is, you know, just a nice, simple, you know, soundscape, you know, and, and, and some of the music, blah, blah, blah. I can't read music, so it doesn't help us. Also, the schedule, you know, um, they start at 9 o'clock, they finish at 1 o'clock, they have a one-hour break, and then they go from 2 o'clock through to 6 p.m., and I'm guessing number one and number two are the recording rooms or the sessions or whatever. And it has uh, Volcanators 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, and 1. So we're going to go with seven soundtracks of uh, total. Apollo 9, 5. Aquilo. Uh, Aquilo. Sorry, Aquilo. Yes. Uh, 9 and 5. It, it's been confirmed Aquilo is yeah. one of the next planets. Yeah. Uh, so we're not sure uh, what happened to the other soundtracks. But then we have... Uh, it's probably on the other page. Possibly, possibly. It's probably I going mean, to be a couple the, the of other days. The trombone on the other page is Space O2, which isn't listed in the, the sheet, is it? Oh, no, it is there. It's the one, yep. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. And then we have a new planet, which, of course, I've forgotten. Uh, that was the... So, um, it's Gleba. The plant one. Which, according to a dictionary, is... The fleshy spore bearing inner mass of certain fungi, such as a puffball or a stinkhorn. So, um, it's going to be a stinky planet. Yep. So, more stinky than Novus is after you've set up your mega base? Uh, yeah, because the engineer breathes pure pollution. Like, the redder the pollution overlay is, the better. Um, but I think Glebe, Glebella, Gleba, Glebellus, I don't know, whatever the planet's going to be, uh, is going to be your nature planet, which is going to be full of um, natural friends you can say hello to. Yep. Uh, uh, also, people are saying that uh, G-L-E-B-A is soil and Polish, so maybe it's the soil planet. Or the um the forest it could lead also lead into the forest planet, which or the you know the lush yeah yeah main forest planet. It's I mean, I, I'm, jungly planet. Yeah, jungly planet. I, I'm gonna go with Gleba. It's gonna be the one that looks like Australia, at least from the image we've seen. I'm hoping they keep the Australia there. Um, it just really fits in that it, it's full of nasty things that want to kill you, like Australia. Uh, okay, so is that the one with the purple ocean as well? Yeah, yeah, it's the one of the the the. Picture of Earth with like the colors inverted. Yeah, that's yeah, the one. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so we got a couple of pictures. Yeah, composing orchestra, so on and so forth. And then I've done my research, and uh, the guy in this photo who happens to look, um, Mojo, polite term required. Um. Um, <laughs> uh, a struggling musician. Struggling musician is the um, struggling musician. Yep, yeah, that that's Peter. That's Peter. Yep, yeah, this this here is or Peter. A, um, well grilled um, music producer. Yeah, yeah. The, the, well the seasoned artistic, music producer. The, the artistic type. Yeah, yeah. Well uh, seasoned um, artist. Yeah, yeah. Long hair. You know, somewhat shaven recently. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yes, this is our Peter... Yeah, I'm not going to pronounce the surname a second I mean, it time. Could be, it could be far worse. Oh, it it's, could be it's far a lot worse. More, um, it's a lot more uh, presentable yeah. uh, than than the modern tradey shaved sides with the the bowl on top. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to talk about Australian tradies. Okay, all right, 
so the current sound soundtrack will stay as the Nava soundtrack. So the style of Factorio One Point One soundtrack was already given to us by our dear Daniel James Taylor, who I don't think does music anymore. I think his web page has just disappeared from memory. It was one of the composers I was looking up recently for making a recommendation to a different dev about music, whatever. Um, so Peter had to adapt his work to continue with Daniel's Narva soundtrack. Doesn't mean the expansion of the soundtrack won't add new colors or textures to the game. Totally contrary. The new content is for the expansion, as the name says, and expands the soundscape of Factorio to new dimensions. Um, so what in general, what the soundtrack tries to do is accompany the player throughout the mental process required by the game to focus the attention at the time of designing factories as logistics. So the music should create a balanced and relaxed, a relaxing atmosphere to allow the player to concentrate. The music is not decoration helps the player to have a better immersion in experience and also add visual to what is not shown on the screen, which I think the current soundtrack does a pretty good job of doing. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. So, in contrast to the entire soundtrack, and I'm adding Daniel's work too, uh, is the Factorio mo motif. Uh, and I'm sure you have it tattooed on your brain already. Do you remember the melody that sounds when loading the game? Yes, you do. Well, Peter developed the entire universe based on these couple of notes. The melody starts through... Uh, the melody sounds through all the planets with many different moves, ryth rhythms, and instruments. Good part is you don't hear it clearly. One just feels it. It's amazing because it creates... Uh, the sort of coherent cosmos that undoubtedly belongs to Factorio. One example is the video of Volcanus, which comes below. Something also shared by all planets, the idea of sense of wonder. We want to express how incredibly nice and positive Skyrim of all these new worlds is, until you find the Bitus. Uh Some of the tracks in different planets have this idea behind them. Now, this is the interesting part. So Factorio's engine constraints. We don't have a way for the engine to tell the music system what's happening in the game. In other words, the music system has no idea if the player is in the middle of a battle, destroying Bider's Nest, or meticulously placing transport belts to satisfy the needs of a growing factory. Which is something that I should add, a lot of other games do have nowadays. Yeah, in general. Um, and this is why I, I go back to my RTS story at the start, and having a full orchestra for those sorts of games because that was something they did very, very early on. They tied the music into what was happening in-game, and even back as far as, I want to say Total Annihilation, which is like the 1990s? Do you know, I've been trying to think, and I don't remember if Warcraft 2 had a full orchestra or if it was synthetic. But I'm, I'm given from the time it's from, I'm probably leaning on synthetic. Probably leaning on synthetic as well. Although... Kind of MIDI-based thing. Although it's... See, it's, it's pretty crisp, though. so old. It's so old that they could have had to use a real orchestra because they were limited, limited, but then had to turn it to MIDI sounds to actually compress it down small enough to fit it on. Oh, it was um, a full CD. It, it was a multi... I forget what they call it. A multi-CD. So there was only like 50 or 100 megabytes of data, and then the rest of it was like an actual audio CD. Yeah, the other one I'm thinking of is Command and Conquer. Command and Conquer was the same. Um, oh, that one, that one is or was crushed down a lot because it's so much older. Yeah, it also had video files on there on the yes. CD that you had to run. It, it off was just to pure pure data. Yeah, um, it it didn't use. I think it was. I want to say, I keep thinking Red Book, but it's not Red Book. It's um. It's the multi-mode CD. Was... Yeah, I can't remember what it was. Da so track one was data, and then tracks two yeah. and above were all music that you could put in it's a CD something player. Something that came a little bit later, and but it required a specific, like it required a CD drive that was compatible with it, which in general was, for the most part, a thing. It was really like a super rare exception when it um, threw a tantrum. Uh, it required a CD drive that had a direct audio. We're going old school here. It had a yes. direct audio cable that came out of the rear of the CD drive in your PC and plugged directly into your sound card to have it bypass and play sound. I remember because I had to fix so many computers at this time because so many computers were made cheaply and people didn't bother adding the cable. And then like, I want to play a music CD. It doesn't work in my computer. Why not? Well, because your sound card doesn't know how to read the CD player because, um, yeah, nobody bothered plugging in a two-cent cable. Anyway, uh, so... 
<laughs> off topic aside. Yep, off topic aside. So, because the engine can't interact with the music system and vice versa, this is greatly limiting the creative solutions at the time of composing the score. Imagine a player quietly placing power uh, pipes to connect two machines, and suddenly there is super epic battle music in the background. It would create a silly situation. We don't want that. So solution we decided to take is instead of trying to illustrate the action itself, better go with the description of the landscape in a more ambient solution. So that may atmosphere of the planet and its new uh, nuances, the, the mood and its variations. The music must be neutral and aware, not having big emotive perks, peaks, and on the other hand, should be rich and dynamic. Otherwise, it would become dull. So the balance between neutral and expressive is sometimes very important to control. So one of the things that this just keeps making me think of is every time you're just minding your own business and then suddenly the music changes and it's because a mud crab's angry at you. Well... That's like 100 metres away. It's, the, it's always just slightly jarring. It's like, why has the music changed to the battle music? I don't see any enemy. This is mm -hmm. very strange. Mm -hmm. the, and then the, it goes away like 15 seconds later because the mud crab's given up because it's <laughs> so far to run. Yeah, the, there are games that definitely do not get the balance right. Um, and there are games that, that definitely have the balance much more on point. And it adds a lot to a game if the music can interact with what's happening on screen and vice versa. So, yeah, we'll have to see. But um, because they're in four new planets plus space, they're going to have five unique soundscapes. So each planet surface has its own mood, shapes, and spirit. Uh, the player should feel feel on which surface the action is focused without having to look at the graphics. Well, this is a very subjective manner. Sometimes it's clear for some, sometimes not so much, but you get the point. At the beginning project, we had to work almost blindly because none of the graphics, the gameplay were fully designed, just ideas, uh, which is what anyone needs to start anything. But now it's different. All the work is done by the team. We can start showing a little taste of how things come together. All the music experts and visual presented this pro post are works in progress. But there are important hints in the works in progress. Videos are meant to be proof of concepts. I made them to easily visualize all the concepts I'm talking about. Hope you enjoy them. So in space, we have uh, two modes. We have stationary in space and then in motion. So we decided to cover both of these cases with two elements. Uh, we use a spacey atmosphere, obviously, with a bit of synth and electronics trying to describe how it feels to be the cold void of the universe. We used a rhythmic bass for the feeling of the platform movement, the power of thrusters, uh, impulsing a big mass of metal, like a space fairy, slow but unstoppable. Yeah, space fairy is about the right descriptive term, because I'm willing to bet that when we first build these things, they're going to be running around at about the speed of a space tugboat. Yeah, lightning fast. A space canoe. Yeah, space and slow. But... I do have to admit, Let's just blow away the asteroid. The engines are awesome. Also, they pause. Are. No, that failed. Okay, pause. Spacebar doesn't make pause. Uh, we have new buildings here. The ones with the red lights. That's a rocket turret, as we determined. Yeah, we're going to see them in action in a minute. Um, also, there's a nuclear reactor on this spaceship. Oh yeah, that was the thing that got my attention the most was the nuclear reactor. <laughs> I was like, oh, the nuclear in space. Yeah, well, as long as you've got fuel, I don't see an issue. And you, you're collecting ice, so as long as you get enough ice, you can have enough steam to make enough power to... Yup. Yup. Uh, also, I'm pretty sure... Didn't they say that we couldn't draw the storage boxes around stuff? Um... I don't recall, specifically. I thought they had to be continuous. Like, it is continuous, and I guess that's the also continuous. The platform itself had to be continuous. No island, or no openings. But yeah. But I don't rule being a thing for... The storages? The hub. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll come back to that one in the future. All right. Uh, nuclear reactor. Uh, every single Love one it. of these is um, rocket turrets. Facing forward. I assume they have a firing arc... But it looks like they also spin 360, like a gun would. Any other gun. I thought they were going to be like a flamethrower for a second there, where they only had a, you know, this is the fire, this is the forward firing arc, arc that's it. The old Chonka asteroid. 
Yeah, and 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 for the record, Mojo, I was right. We had combat. Yeah. We had combat. I was right on the pre future predictions. This is combat. Oh yeah, it's there was even 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 though it's combating um, asteroids. It's even though it's fighting combat. rocks, that, that that's still I'm right. Okay, we have rocks the, are the rocks are the new true enemy. Yeah. So, it's no longer about the trees, it's about the rocks. We have the platform self-repairing. I'm hoping there's graphics coming in the future because currently the inserters and the guns and everything just magically replace. There's no animation for them. Yeah, oh yeah, because um, there's no bots or anything, so technically it's done underneath. The theory was that the scorpions come out yeah, at the ground. Yeah, the, the factory scorpion. And do it for you. Yeah, uh, also I should mention... That's sulfur, uh, which is sulfur plus coal, which makes explosives. And then explosives plus... No, so, sulfur. Yeah, sulfur and coal gives explosives. And the explosives come over these machines and turn into something? No, that's more sulfur. That must be sulfur and coal on that belt. I'm not sure. Yeah, I... Seems a little odd. These, I'm pretty sure, are going to be making explosives. Yeah, what that's water. Coal and sulfur no, no, no. explosives. Yeah, yeah. Coal and sulfur is here. Okay. Yeah. And that comes off this belt, which is also split here, which is coming this way, which is giving us sulfur. No idea how the coal gets on the same belt, but I'm willing to bet that it's meant to have coal on it. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, so we have explosives being made here with iron this is iron i have yeah it's hidden underneath the machines they've got some z problems uh but we have iron here which is then getting combined with explosives to give us rockets so it looks like rockets no longer require green circuits which is interesting because i don't see green circuits as part of this at all no it looks like it's the suspicion is that it's part of um the previous step Unless, the only uh, exception I would add to that is that, uh, oh no, because that is coming from both, side loading from both sides. I hadn't seen that. Yep. So the new recipe for rockets is now uh, shorter green circuits, which uh, just means that I assume rockets no longer track their enemies. And you need to get to explosive rockets to do the tracking. That's my assumption. Hence well, maybe there's dumb rockets and then uh, smart rockets, and then explosive rockets. Yeah, I don't think we're going to add another tier of rockets. Like, we're talking about the difference of a green circuit. I think they've just dumped the green circuit, just turned off the homing. That's my assumption. Or just turned off the green circuit outright. But yes, um, this is making rockets to feed into the many rocket launchers, it turns out, it is on this platform. Yep. Which I'm all about. I'm... Firing rockets and things. Totally about setting up defences with rockets. Yeah. The only other thing I could think of is that maybe it goes into some kind of explosives into and a second tier of explosives. I don't... Because uh, uh, uh. it's explosive... Normally it would be explosives into rockets. That's the thing that's odd. Like, don't get me wrong, there's inserters going down here, so I... I, I, I yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I saw these guys, I'm like, well, they're obviously going to be making explosives. Because sulfur's right there, and we have a link yeah. here, which then links down to this thing, which brings it in have an obvious link to coal. Coal, ice, ice going this way. It is sharing water. Like it, this is making ice that goes up and then goes over. Uh, where is that belt? This belt. This belt, which has the new wire all over it. Which is then we're crushing the water and turning into no, we're crushing the iron and turning into iron bits, and the water and kicking out coal here. So coal comes this way, and you output onto the far side of the belt, which should side load onto that side. Yeah, yeah, that's meant to have coal in it. It's just short of coal right now. Yeah, no, that's sulfur. No idea. No idea. Mm, very strange. Okay. So, first soundtrack, first bit of music. It's good. I like this one. I also like that we get to see a whole platform. Oh, yeah. And not only that, but a late game platform. Also, foundries. 
Oh yeah, foundries and space tugboat. Mm. Like that is so much storage. That also looks pretty cool. Yeah, and obviously it needs more fuel. All right, so uh, I space all four. Okay, then we have volcanoes. Dark, impressive, hot, and heavy, but also wonderful. We found it very here, here, coherent and appropriate to use. Long chords and um, bass instruments. These bar, brass, fine, whatever. Uh, <laughs> these are put into the magnificence of this fantastic land landscape with contrast to the hazardous volcanoes and lava. The only thing that I want to pick out of this video is this train passes by, which is confusing because it has normal wagon, artillery wagon, two fluid wagons, and then five normal wagons. All being hauled by one engine. Which means there's artillery on this planet. Which means there are friends on this planet. Just want to point out, we have friends on this planet. Friends confirmed. Yeah. Democracy confirmed. Yes. Yes. Must spread democracy. Forcefully. Oh, also there's pump jacks. It could be for fire suppression as well. Yeah, sure. But the stinky nozzles of sulfur. Yeah, and we have coming up shortly. We have pump jacks placed on the stinky nozzles to grab sulfuric acid. Yeah, which is something that wasn't clear before. If it was solid, to me at least, it was solid or liquid. But it makes sense that it's liquid. Uh, it makes sense. And it makes that sense it that it's a pump jack. That they would just reuse it. I'm sort of hoping. There it is. Yeah, I'm sort of hoping that we get pump jacks. Uh, you know how miners change? There's our artillery train. Our There's very train confusing train. Irrationally makes you irrationally angry. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, actually, I really like the soundtrack. It's pretty good. It, it's got a feel of like James James Bond villain in it somewhere. Oh yeah, it does too. A bit of the, 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 the Bond villain in the um, volcano there. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. Um. I think that's got a bit of Evil Genius sound in it. Oh, it does! I think that's where I'm hearing it. Yeah, we're trying to place where we music similar to this. Yeah, Evil Genius. Evil Genius 2. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's an Evil Genius soundtrack that... Evil Genius 2 soundtrack that sounds similar. Uh, James Hannigan uh, he is the composer, and yeah, it's the main theme song. It's the main theme song. There you go. Um, uh -huh. Interesting Evil Genius 2, link, link, maybe, down below. If not, the playlist is on the channel. Can I have a look? Um, all right. Don't buy it full price. For oh, God's sake, don't buy that game full price. Don't buy it full price, because it's probably on sale all over the place now, because it's a couple of years old, but it's, it is still a good game. All right. Uh, so, Volcanus, uh, I, I, I like this one. We didn't see anything important in the video apart from pump jacks. Now, pump jacks, it was saying, remember how miners change their shape and design if you put them on acid, on... Uranium. So when you put them on uranium, yeah. they get all the pump, they all the all, all, all the liquid crazy crap. stuff. I really sort of hope, wish that pump jacks on sulfuric acid do the same. They just get oh change because uh, cur currently it just shows it um, looking like it's pumping oil. It, it just looks like a pump jack, and I just want a different style of pump jack. Just just something minor. It doesn't have to be major. It just, you know, I don't know. It changes color. It's 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 more resistant to acid. It's made out of shinier metal. Um, something, something. In fairness, mm. going back to the point before, it is work in progress. Um, work in progress, not representative yep. of the final product, etc., yep. etc. Et so yep. there is potential for room to see them revisited in the future. Yep, I just mentioning it now. You know, in case the devs happen to be watching the video. Yep. Uh, okay, the main, uh, and then we have Fogora. The main theme of this is electromagnetism. We aim for more electric sounds. Peter made lots of experiments with the sound of electricity, like tapping an audio jack with his finger and recording rhythms with it, then manipulating it for use in the compositions. This expert show, shown in this video illustrates it quite well. I didn't hear any of that, but I don't know about this one so much. I think this is a bit too much. And uh, pause. Uh, we also have a new item on the recipes. Uh, we have assemblers that are consuming gears, plus blue circuits, plus even more gears with the concrete or bricks. Concrete or iron plate? 
No, no, it's not iron plate. It's bricks or concrete. Oh no, yeah, or concrete or bricks. And then steel. Yeah, more likely concrete. And then outputting brown things with the occasional green quality brown thing. Mm. And then we have to be confused with the next row down, which is doing green yeah. things with the occasional blue quality thing in Mr. Bob. Oh, that's um, the same thing, but green and blue quality. It's a better quality of the same thing. Yeah. And then we have the next one, which is doing the blue ones with some Persia pearls and one legendary. So one of them was working hard. Everybody else mm. sucks. But then, funnily enough, it's being side loaded. So the brown stuff gets used first. Yeah, the crap ones gets used. So whatever this is doing is probably just going back into recycling. And don't forget, recycling is the main theme of this planet, which means if all the belts are backed up, technically it's working correctly. Yeah, it means it's doing its job. If the belts are not backed up, that's the point where you have trouble, which is going to be a weird way of looking at the factory. Yeah. So I think the tapping of the jack is the baseline. I don't know about the soundtrack. I really don't know. And you mentioned you have it. to put it in place to really get the feel for it. And you mentioned it, and now I'm watching it a second time. Yeah, the lightning's maybe a bit much. It, it does get annoying, doesn't it? Yeah. That was the first comment that I had, was that there's a lot of lightning. I mean, it does... This is an exaggerated example, to, as before. Uh, it's going off like that, it's just going to get annoying. Every night. Uh, so double, double uh, substations carrying wires. Oh, yeah. Water confirmed. Uh, where were we? Yeah, so, um, we have circuitry in here that's controlling... Mm, these are, these are recyclers. Um, that's a red wire, a green wire, and another red wire. That's a lot of different signals. That's a lot of signals for the, for the recycling system. There's also a lot of robot ports. There's an awful lot of robot ports. Somebody's gone robot heavy on this particular one. Um, Someone loves the bots. <laughs> Whoever was in charge of this planet loves bots. Yeah. Do you know what? It's probably V who was in charge of Vulcanus, Vulcaninus. Uh, or, or we're just lazy. Like, you just do things with robots and just not care. All right? Yeah, that too. That's that's another giant advantage of robots. Like, you can literally put things anywhere, and the only thing you're increasing is delays between travel time. And the answer to that is higher requests and more robots. Um, more bots. More bots fix all problems. Yeah, now we, we, we did, well, we didn't really say it, but I thought at the back of my head, we are getting a new superconductive wire on this planet as an intermediate, which is technically a blue wire. So I thought there was a yes. possibility we might get a blue wire signal. <laughs> Therefore, we're getting a third circuit wire. Yeah, that's a little bit of wishful thinking, I, I suspect. Yeah, I'm pretty sure with the amount of wires we have right here and none of them are blue, uh, that went straight out the window. In yep. theory, the the wires should actually be like yellow and uh, blue anyway. They should probably be different colors so people that are colorblind can see them. Yeah, but we'll... there is a mod that actually I say it because there is actually a mod that changes them to blue and yellow for that specific reason. Uh, I think the the mod actually has multiple options for different types of color blindness. Um, yeah, but the the, mm. the main one is is the, yep. that combination depending on the different um, condition. Yeah, the, the lightning is, um... Yeah, the lightning, though, going back to that. Yeah. Especially at night. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of lightning. And the thing is, you could be working on something zoomed right the way in, and then it could literally go off right beside you. And whoever's in charge of the trains that is using active providers to take something out of it and needs three stack inserters? Is either really impatient or really keen to get it out in a hurry. It's or like both. hot potato or something. Or both? Or yeah. Both. I mean, it's, it's trying to put it's three inserters putting in nuclear fuel. I mean, that's going to take a single inserter cycle to completely fill it. Well, they move a stack and they stack in one. So technically that's a single cycle from all three inserters to completely fill all three slots in the train. Yes. 
So assuming they... all of them being consumed, which takes a really long time to do. But maybe they were pulling out all the coal and they want to make sure all the coal left in one swing. Maybe? Out of the trains? Oh, yeah, that is actually a thing now. It is a thing now, but then again, it means they only need to swing once. We already have a dedicated, like, interrupt for fueling stations. Like, do I need to have three inserters? Can't I just put new fuel in? And... That is the fuel station. That could be the fuel station, but can I come back to my original statement? Can't I just put the fuel in and then the old fuel will burn out eventually? And then they'll be I running mean, on that... nuclear fuel? That's how my solution to it is just let the, leave the old fuel in there and just never care again. Yeah, look, when I come back and I've been playing the same game for 50 hours and I find out one train finally burns the last piece of wood that I threw in a very, very early game and gets upgraded nuclear fuel, I'm cheering! I'm also realizing that when I put 300 bits of wood in that, it was good for 150 hours. Didn't need to automate fuel. run for, for, wood, for wood. Yeah, which well, just means it was a train that wasn't being very used very actively. And also, um, it's, whenever it was being used, it's clogging up the, the railway line because it's slow acceleration. Yeah. The RGB lamps? Yeah, the RGB lamps. And just, just a rocket or two. Just, just a rocket just or two. Just one or two. Now I know why they upgraded the... Um, the rocket to craft while you got the the loaded one on top. Well, one on top. I, I I I'm willing to bet this is one item per rocket to launch into space. <laughs> Probably. It is. It like they're all being fed from boxes. Okay. Uh, like it so has so to I, be. There's no reason to do this. We already know you can do multiple. Like it's, it's, it already has its own inventory. Like you don't need to do one rocket per item. I'm looking for one inserter that's... But need and want, I should clarify, is a different, completely different from each like, other. That inserter's carrying something. That inserter's carrying blue wire. Oh, and that's you... not blue. Potentially the superconductor. That's the superconductor wire. So it's a rocket full of superconductor wire ready to go to space. Uh, that's holding something. I got no idea what it is. That's holding something else. Poison capsule, maybe? Um, that's holding something else. That's holding superconductive wire as well, you know, for when you really need to get your superconductive wire into space. So I'm willing to bet it is one rocket for every single item that this base is producing ready to launch to space. At least one rocket. Because nothing... It's probably the, the single best way to express um, your your completeness in endgame. And um, also, that go, this is... Uh, this is also maybe teasing as the next step up from the 40 stack challenge. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. One rocket solo of every single type ready to go, fully loaded with the boxes uh, preloaded, ready to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be stream late game when you just, you want a new spaceship to show up in orbit, drop off its cargo and be loaded and left straight away. This is like speed loading train stations, you know, when they, you have those stations like, okay, I need to have this train into the station unloaded and left in 40 seconds. So the next one can be pulled in within 20 seconds because the that's the timing train. I need to have things moving at, you know, the capacity this station needs for items to keep running at full speed. And I could add a second station and give myself, you know, two minutes, but I don't want to do that. We're just going to have one train move in really fast. Yep. This is the same with the um, space tugs. Yeah. When you want to mass move things between planets. Just have three or four space tugs ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm... Um, Just queue them in a stacker. In space. <laughs> well, I don't think space is going to need a stacker. I also don't think it's going to have a limit to how many spaceships you could have in space, orbiting in space at the same space time, therefore requiring a space tra a st stacker. Um, yes. So we have two more planets, uh, and I'm just going to play 30 seconds out of each one of these. Willing to bet the first one is going to be our greeny planet, listening to the soundtrack, and the second one's going to be the fourth planet, which is like the ice slash water world, whatever it happens to be. And um, let's go to, I don't know, there. Oh, and this one we thought sounded like... I, I was thinking of EverQuest for this one. Because uh, I never really played EverQuest. Or, that was or, it, Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Oh yes, the uh, the soundtrack. Uh, which of course, the track, audio is, audio track is unavailable. 
just played it. <laughs> you just played it, YouTube. Yeah, Dance the Sugar Pop Fairy. It, it definitely sounds similar. Um, anybody who's old enough would probably remember the same sort of sounds from Fantasia. Um, the original, not the 2000 version. Uh, and then the second half of the sound audio sounds like it's from the water ice planet. From Waterworld. Far enough, like, bombed us time, but I actually enjoyed that movie. Yeah. It's so a fun movie. Uh, but it does mean they're adding five hours work to the soundtrack as each surface the game the game uh, each surface the game plays around one hour worth of music. So they did mention that they can't have the game and the music interact with one another so you know what's happening on screen, but they can control what surface you're on. So if you're on Narvis, it'll play the original soundtrack, and then when you move to the Vulcanus, well you're gonna get the Vulcanus soundtrack. And then same with Fagola and so, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, that's going to be interesting that we get five yeah, I'd, different I'd, I'd soundtracks. About it. Um, yeah, well, six different soundtracks, technically, because we're number one for space. Um, mm. but are we going to spend an hour in space? Like, I sort of imagine um, space is like a short visit. It'd be 20 minute unless... hops between planets. Uh, you probably spend most of it um, building. But we can't physically get out and build. It's all um, done with blueprints. Oh, here's a question. Will the track change when you're remote viewing? I will in a bit, no. Remote viewing into the space platform. I am I mean, well, technically, this is space platform you are remote viewing into. So that's a weird one. Because space platform, mm. like they've already said, you get into the main building, you just sort of live in there until you dropped off at the next location. We still don't know how we get down yet, but that's 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 a thing. So I don't know. And like, if we get into a space platform and we have an hour's worth of soundtrack, and it takes like forty minutes to get between planets, that's gonna suck. Yeah, the down downtime potential downtime between traveling between planets is potentially annoying. Like. Like, sure, I can go to remote view and I can go back home and I can still place and build things and have the robots do it, but by the same token, I'm assuming when I first get on a spaceship, I don't have spiders. So we have no way of remote building. Like, outside the robot network. Sure, I can copy and paste down blueprints for different robot ports and extend the network that way, but it doesn't change the fact that if I get attacked or something at an outpost, I don't have a way of fixing it once I'm in space. And do I want to ride 40 minutes to then turn around, ride 40 minutes back to go fix something? No. So I, I, I'm i getting more concerned about how space is going to work. Yes. Uh, but yeah. back to the front of facts. Uh, so now I have all the demos and recordings, the orchestra, orchestrated parts. Uh, we don't have the final mixes, only a few of Peter's pre-mixes. Every sub process uh, changes the track normally for the better. We're also starting to see better shape for the graphics and the gameplay. So I'm going to put all this material in the engine before the final mixes in order to get a test and get feedback. I'm quite sure we'll be able to fine-tune the entire soundtrack in a way that pays off all the energy Peter and everybody else involved in, put, in putting into such a crazy project. Um, yeah, I'm interested. I'm interested. I still don't know about the lightning and the Fogola planet. That maybe is a bit much, but yeah, everything that's, else. Um, I'm either, I'm hoping that it is just cranked up for, for the video and it isn't like that all the oh, time, well, every night. The, 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 the thing is that the soundtrack might find sound fine, but all the factory sounds and lightning on top is just too much. Yeah. So it could be that the soundtrack's fine, but again, people are not going to get to listen to the soundtrack as the soundtrack outside Woob until Factorio 2.0 comes out, whenever the hell that is. Which means getting feedback on just the soundtrack as a standalone item is going to be hard. So, I don't know. We're going to find out next week for more Friday Facts. Uh, Mojo, predictions? Um, oh, I don't even know now. Like, I didn't even see the mu I didn't even think of the music one coming. I knew music would be uh, around sooner or later. 
It's, I mean, it makes sense that it would come up. Oh, I mean, it, it does follow the same pattern. You know how I was saying the logistics um, window? That's neglected. That was neglected, so they came to that. Music, again, it's um, neglected. Mm, Hasn't come up again. Yeah. So what else is left that's not neglected? That's been neglected, neglected. and haven't, hasn't been touched. Um, well, it's not really neglected, isn't the wrong term. It's sort of which hasn't been mentioned yet, hasn't received any new updates. Uh, assembler graphics. Assembler graphics? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, they were fixed ages ago. We mentioned this previous Friday Facts. Assembler graphics were fixed ages ago when they were brought a little bit more improved, but then a lot of other graphics in the game got an improvement run after the assemblers. And the assemblers haven't been retouched since. Speaking of assemblers, Capital Industries just did their assemblers and they moved out of the tin shed into um, something that actually better resembles oh, yeah, something that actually assembles the, um, things. Yep. Yeah. It's not now hard to see what they're producing. But it's no, it, it, beforehand they didn't really have anything. They just had a tin shed. Didn't they have it? Wasn't it on no, the, the middle no, of the tin shed like the storage? No, no, just on the storage. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no, yeah, no. yeah, 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 and you had to look at all the storages around them to work out what the hell they were yeah. doing, according to ins and outs, and what oh, other yeah. recipes you had like you know, near them. So, um, assemblers, assemblers. There you go. There's an easy one. And I, I, I called it. There was combat. There was combat. It might have been between a space combat. platform yeah, no, yeah, and, and, and a rocket. Happened. And, and 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 a rock. Um, but I want more combat. We've had a tease so for combat. You're saying assemblers, are you? Uh, no, I'm saying you should go with assemblers. I'm going with more combat. I want I real combat. combat. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Assemblers for me, combat <laughs> we're, we're for you. We're both going with combat. Yep, or oh, whatever, whatever, we're working out next week. Um, that's the only thing left that I can think of. Yeah, it is. It really is. Like, combat has been, it's been untouched since they nerfed the tank that no longer has a tank turret on it because it doesn't get turret upgrades anymore. And they changed the flamethrower of on it from the traditional flamethrower that we have in the game to a flamethrower that doesn't have napalm. It just shoots Sne fire. The sneeze. It shoots fire and doesn't leave any, you know, burn over it's time. It's on fire. Yeah, it, it just, it, it's crap. It's absolute crap. Uh, that's the last time they changed combat. Um, you know, they also nerfed the normal flamethrower, so spin and wind was no longer a thing. But yeah, um... Either way, we're going to leave this here. Uh, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you enjoyed. We'll be back for next week for more Friday Facts and hopefully something on combat. Anyway, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. See you next one. Bye. Bye-bye.